Francisco Perez, welcome to another educational video. Now that we've established the presence of sophisticated cultures in the Americas in the far distant past, we will now look at just who these people might have been in an attempt to find out not just where they themselves came from, but also the advanced knowledge they carried with them. After the last Sumerian dynasty fell around 2000 BC, Mesopotamia drifted into conflict and chaos for almost a century. Around 1900 BC, a group of Semites, Canaanites called the Amorites, had managed to gain control of most of the Mesopotamian region. Like the Akkadians, the Amorites centralized the government over the individual city-states and based their capital in the city of Babylon, which was originally called Akkad and served as the center of the Amorite Empire. For this reason, the Amorites are also called the Old Babylonians. And I remember. So when we're talking about the Amorites, we mostly pretty much just talking about the Amorites, the Amorites, the United Arab Amorites, all right? In the period of their ascendancy over the region, which lasted from 1900 to 1600 BC, is called the Old Babylonian from Canaan, the first son of Ham, and as such were the first in recorded history to have been a priest of the Most High God, Melchizedek. Melchizedek is also known as Quetzalcoatl, Hermes Trismegistus, etc., and was one of the serpent priests. Now we gotta, we gotta weed through the hijack, because they love to hijack. But we know that there's some eggs in this basket, like in every basket. That we discussed earlier. They, along with many other tribes, occupied the pre-conquest territory of Canaan. Amorite may have signified either a single ethnic clan or a loose confederacy of tribes. At times, the Amorite name seems to be synonymous with Canaanite and to represent all non-Israelites who God commanded to be driven from the land. Canaanite. Canaanite comes from the root word Cain, which Cons. means serpent. Who's there was the evidence of them today? in Babylonia, where in the 19th century BC they established under their patronage the first dynasty at Babylon. The most powerful king of this dynasty, Hammurabi, put an end to Amorite domination and issued a famous code of law, the Code of Hammurabi. So Hammurabi, which is I, almost identical to the the law of Moses and our, and our ancient practices, who came from Ur, I believe in that region he took down this united amorite or amorite confederacy and enacted laws statutes and commandments again similar to israelite codes at the time of joshua the amorites were living both east and west of the dead sea they were subdued and gradually absorbed by the israelites under the leadership of joshua it is quite likely that at one time the Amorites were the most powerful of all the pagan clans in Palestine. The Babylonians called the area of Syria and Palestine the land of the Amorites. That could explain ongoing feuds over these lands to this day. The Amorites lived in close contact with the Sumerians for a long time preceding their ascendancy over the region, so it's possible that they gradually adopted Sumerian religion over several centuries. The Amorites did, however, import a new god into Sumerian religion. Marduk, which they elevated to the supreme position over all other gods. In the earliest Sumerian sources beginning about 2400 BC, the land of the Amorites, the Martu land as it was called, is associated with the lands west of the Euphrates, including Syria and Canaan. However, the Amorites' ultimate origin may have been Arabian. For the Akkadian kings, Martu was one of the four quarters surrounding Akkad, along with Subartu, Sumer, and Elam. They appear as nomadic people in the Mesopotamian sources, and they are especially connected with the mountainous region of Jebel Bishiri in Syria called the Mountain of the Amorites. The ethnic terms Amuru and Amar were used for them in Assyria and Egypt respectfully. Amorites worship, among others, the moon god Sin and Amuru from whom their name may... Look, the moon god Sin, Amuru. This is them, the people, the Khans. 
the Canaanites who call themselves the Khans. <laughs> Be taken. Amuru is sometimes described as a shepherd and the son of the Mesopotamian sky god Anu. He is called Baal Sade, the lord of the mountain, and he Baal. who dwells on the pure mountain. Amuru was also known as Ia or Enki and was the father of Marta. The Amorite language was a Semitic. Yeah, we know that Ya is also a term for the moon god. Dialect. The main sources for our limited knowledge about their language are proper names, not Akkadian in style, that are preserved in ancient inscriptions. Many of these names are similar to the much later biblical Hebrew names. It is unclear exactly where the Amorites originated, although ancient texts say they came somewhere from the west and that. Look how they look like Arabs. Like the Amorites. It's, these pictures don't lie, man. They're just telling us the wrong names. They fled to a western land where their copper mines were located after the exodus of the Jews forced them out of Palestine. Unlike the Moabites and Ammonites, who occupied areas sometimes overlapping the Amorite lands east of the Jordan, the Amorites were considered unrelated to the Israelites by blood. God promised to give the Amorites land to Abraham's descendants, but exempted the Ammonites and Moabites from Israelite aggression. The Amorites were thus listed among the Canaanite tribes whom the Israelites should drive out of the land when they came to Canaan from Egypt. However, after the Exodus, the book of Numbers indicates that the Israelites were willing to make peace with the Amorites, offering them the same terms given to the Moabites. Right, so do you get it? When we left Egypt and came to America, we're supposed to get rid of everybody. We're supposed to say, you know, it's all good. I mean, I understand you guys live here, but this is actually my house. And I just, I just came from Egypt to find all you in my house. So all y'all gonna have to get out of here. Y'all gonna have to leave already to get up out of my house. That's what it was like. And then, you know how like some of your friends like, oh man, I ain't got nowhere to go, man. Give me a couple of hours. Just let me, just let me cruise for a little while, and then you're like, all right, man, it's a little while, and you gotta get out of here. That's what we did. We said, no, nah, you're good. Yeah, cruise, cool. And they never left, and, or they've been thorns in our side, pricks in our eyes. To Edomites, let us pass through your country. We will not turn aside into any field or vineyard or drink water from any well. We will travel along the king's highway until we have passed through your territory. Seeing their vast numbers, the Amorite king Sihon refused this offer, mustering an army against the Israelites who defeated him at Jahaz and claimed the city of Heshbon and its environs. They next defeated King Og of Bashan, also an Amorite. Now we know all of this is in America, in the west in the Western Hemisphere of America. And we can find the ghost towns and the cities where these kings ruled today. And seize his territory as well. Og is elsewhere described as the last of the remnant of the giants, whose bed was 13 feet long. The Amorites were- Now you know I just did a video on Utah, on caves, Brewer's Cave, and how they found giants, redhead giants in humongous beds, blonde and redheads. Come on now, people. You see what I see? Do you see what I see? Every day in Kalihi. Said to be a seafaring people like the Phoenicians and had advanced knowledge of navigation, astronomy, building, mathematics, as well as metalworking, crystals, and alchemy. I was blown away to discover the Amorites were also known as mound builders with mounds attributed to Amorite creation being found in Saudi Arabia that look remarkably similar to those found in the United States. There has been much evidence found in the state of Michigan of ancient copper mining going on so far back in antiquity that the coal extracted found in these ancient copper mines would crumble to dust upon touch. Someone this is when they're going to start taking this away from me and place it on another Michigan people. And shipping it across the United States to what is now Florida, and then shipping it off somewhere presumably back to the Middle East. Evidence of an ancient port with many copper artifacts tracing back to Michigan mines, as well as ancient red hair mummies, has been found in Florida. At the very same time, circa 1000 BC, we find the construction of the first real city in the United States. 
at a site archaeologists call Poverty Point along the Mississippi River in Louisiana. Here, according to Linda Schaefer, at Poverty Point, King Solomon supposedly would take his 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 uh, minded all the resources he would get from his ancient mines that we have found in America and take it to Poverty Point and and other places for trade. Berber style mound building in the New World begins with stuff. You see how they keep saying Berber, 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 oh it's these Moors, it's these Berbers, it's Moroccans. Hurtling suddenness. Native Americans before 1492, page six. Poverty Point was a trading city through which the copper wealth of the Mississippi River and the Great Lakes was funneled. Observes R. Ben Madison, utilizing megalithic ideas, Poverty Point's mounds are aligned so as to predict the vernal and autumnal equinoxes. At its peak between 1000 and 700 BC, Poverty Point had a population of over 5,000 people. Its direct territorial control took in the Mississippi Valley in Mississippi, Louisiana, and Southern Arkansas. There were also noted two distinct districts in the city. The Phoenician ships with their Israelite traders and buyers used this port on the Mississippi for buying the ore that was transported down the river from Lake Superior and the Isle Royale. The fact that Poverty Point was divided into two districts points to a Canaanite Phoenician quarter and a quarter for the Israelites who traveled on the Phoenician ships. Evidently, a large quantity of the copper ore stockpiled by David for use in the temple passed through Poverty Point. Later, David's son Solomon continued importing the ore from Lake Superior in his grandiose building projects until it was finally exhausted. These Danites were migrating Israelite tribes from the Black 